This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, May the 1st, 2019. It's May Day, the 1st of May, and a time that most cultures in world history have associated with springtime and fertility. This is a time for festivals of fertility goddesses, for festivals of Mother Nature, and since early on in the Christian tradition, it's been a time for honoring the Blessed Virgin Mary. Which is fascinating to me because in the eyes of non-Christians, the Blessed Virgin Mary is not a symbol of fertility. But this isn't just springtime, it's Eastertide. The first of May is always in the Easter season. And so the fertility and the fecundity that we're talking about isn't ripe tomatoes and blossoming hydrangeas. It's the spiritual fruit of the resurrection of Jesus that ties us right back to the Blessed Virgin Mary. No doubt, in early Christianity, young girls in colorful outfits celebrated the goddesses Sybil or Demeter one May and the Blessed Virgin Mary the next. And no doubt there was an adoption and an adaptation of certain dances and music from the pagan tradition. Still, the month of May is now a thoroughly Marian devotion and a time for the rosary, for processions, and for celebrating youth, especially the unique wonder of young girls who are in every way not young boys. It's a time for pretty dresses, singing and dancing and making elaborate and time-consuming party favors and traditional foods. It's May Day. It's also the feast of St. Joseph the Worker. Like other saints, especially in the traditional calendar, St. Joseph is not a one-note personality. He has several feasts to celebrate and emphasize several aspects of his personality. March the 19th is the feast of St. Joseph, comma, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. May the 1st is the feast of St. Joseph the Worker who taught Jesus carpentry, and who provided for his family by the toil of his hands, making him a descendant of Adam's punishment when he and Eve were banished from the garden. Today, then, is a day of prayer and honoring workers, especially manual laborers and skilled artisans. One of the more fascinating aspects of modernity is that as technology has become ubiquitous, and literally anything can be shipped to the front door, more and more young people are finding themselves ordering supplies to home make everything from soap to sandals. And the fundamental human desire to craft something useful and beautiful is not fulfilled by tweets or YouTube comments. There's something about working with one's hands, about cooking for oneself, about providing for oneself and one's family. St. Joseph the Worker, pray for us. Today was the day in 305 AD when the Roman co-emperors Diocletian and Maximian retired from office. Diocletian was an awful person in that he brutally oppressed his enemies, especially the Christians, but he was a successful Roman emperor, at least as long as he sat on the throne. He established a complicated system with four men at the top of the power structure. There was a seniority scale with Diocletian as the top of the top. And he decided that for his system to endure, power needed to be handed over well before death. And so he forced his co-emperor Maximian to retire when he did. But Maximian didn't want to retire. He wanted to enjoy being the senior Augustus, the top of the top, for at least a little bit. But Diocletian wasn't having it and forced his hand. Ultimately, Diocletian's system didn't even last a single generation. After his retirement to, no joke, farm cabbages, a young upstart named Constantine stepped into the most junior seat of the Big Four. And by the time he was done, several years after Diocletian's death, Constantine gobbled up all four of the top spots and reunited the Roman Empire east and west under a single emperor. Of course, that couldn't last. The times, as Dylan said, were a changing. And within a hundred years of Constantine's excellent and efficient tenure, the Roman Empire was in visible decline. Within 200 years, it was donezo. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.